All right, what's up guys, Poppin here. And today I'm gonna to be giving you a little bit of a new sort of interesting uh, video. Um, I originally scrapped this concept because uh, it was a little bit, um, uh, let's say let's say scuffed, uh, right? Um, basically for this video, before I get into anything else, is uh, just about where to find some resources on um, Team Fight Tactics. And I apologize if you can hear my uh, dryer. I just really wanted to get something out today. So basically, um, in Team Fight Tactics, there's not a lot of information available in general about how the game is played. Uh, I'm, this has allowed me to become relatively successful being able to make videos like this for you guys. But it has also sort of had this little issue where there's information um, that is not readily available to people. And all of these links will be available uh, in the description, by the way. But, um, you know, I wanted to uh, sort of uh, show you where some of these things are. So, in essence, what I'm going to be going over is things like the meta, things like um, just trends, because a lot of this stuff you have to kind of watch on like things like Twitch from uh, popular Twitch streamers, and realistically, um, for me personally, I don't have time to uh, spend hours watching them and analyzing their games like I used to, but this is what I did when... Um, I, I wasn't able to do that uh, at that time. So if you have a lot of time constraints to understand things, uh, this can help you at least to some extent. But um, I guess without further bullshit, let's uh, let's jump right into it. So basically, the first thing I want to talk about is items. Um, items in TFT are very important, obviously. So on this is lolchess.gg uh, statistics items. Um, I can show you where to go to get get these uh, menus or whatever, um, but. The first one will just be here. So, in essence, you can actually find what the what the most common combinations of items are for champions. So, it's in alphabetical order, um, and then it'll show you their top five and the percentages in which they're being used. So, for instance, if you are a little bit um, confused on what items to go on a champion, you can just refer to this. Uh, obviously, um, you know best in slot Aatrox might be these three. Um, but more realistically, it's going to be the, the first item is something that you want to strive for. And then the other two are like just possible options in the event that you play them. So, for instance, let's go with something like a Relian Soul, right? So everybody knows Jeweled Gauntlet's good. Um, people don't actually consider Gunblade a lot. And, I mean, up until a few days ago, people didn't even consider uh, that Elderwood uh, Sprout would be a core thing on him. Um, so, yeah. But we'll just go through really quick and, uh, like... I'm just going to literally like fast scroll through this and just try and try and like look with me and see what items you see in this first column here, okay? So we're just going to not super fast, but just quickly just try and analyze whatever data we can get. So I don't know about you guys, but the things that I saw the most were Sunfire Cape, and I'll go back up, and then maybe like Jeweled Gauntlet, maybe a couple Runons, right? So just by quickly hitting that, um, and we'll go through really slow now. So, basically, you got Sunfire, RFC, Sunfire, Jeweled, Gauntlet. And actually, we can we can probably even... Mm, there's probably a better way to, to go about this. But look, if we just look, we can see a couple of trends, right? Jeweled, Gauntlet, super popular. And then you can analyze where they're coming from. So, Jeweled, Gauntlet, Darius, eh, that's kind of okay, right? Titans, okay, cool. Um, Morello, eh. And it's it's also a lower percentage, right? Um, Single-digit percentages aren't really something you want to look at that much. Um, but then you have, like, you know, Sunfire here with 27. Sunfire... Sunfire here is again an eight, but like where, wherever Sunfire is, it's on like a, like a not super core unit to any comp, but it is, um, at least present in a lot of them. Right. So by, by looking at this and especially here, when you look at this, you can definitely just be like, okay, well I can see that Sunfire Cape is used in a lot of builds. So by analyzing this, you can kind of say, okay, well, if I happen to get Sunfire components at any given point in time and I'm not looking for a different item based out of either of them, because realistically, you're not going to be building a lot of things out of belt and uh, Vest is going to usually be for something like Guardian Angel. So if you already have a Guardian Angel or whatever, if you hit these items at any point in time, you can say to yourself, I'm in instantly going to slam Sunfire Cape, right? Okay. So we can see that that for at least a secondary carry being in the form of like a tank carry or a frontliner on your team is definitely good. Um, this isn't any new information, by the way. Uh, but, you know, in the reference of Sunfire Cape itself um, and the meta currently, 
it's definitely something worth considering. Now, if we go through and scroll, instead of looking at the front uh, thing here, because Sunfire Cape is just something that we see on a bunch of secondary carries, of course, right? But instead, we go to look for um, the primary carries of team comps, right? So let's go and let's just start from the top and try and find the first primary carry. So Akali could be, but I don't personally play ninjas. If you do, then these are the items you want to go. Um, I'm actually surprised to see Gunblade not being on this list. Um, so me personally, I thought Gunblade would be better for Akali 3. It seems that Infinity Edge is what you want to slay most of the time. And here's why I think that, because Infinity Edge can probably be used for more carries. Um, Gunblade only can be used on a couple. So that's my personal thing. But if you are building more uh, Gunblades in your games, you're probably already going for other champions that can use them. So, you know, that's just what you have to think about for Infinity Edge versus Gunblade. But, you know, the first thing here being Aurelian Soul. So Aurelian Soul builds a Jeweled Gauntlet. We'll jump to the next general carry being, let's say, I don't want to consider Diana because she's actually starting to fall off a little bit. Um, we'll scroll all the way down. So there's a Callista. So Callista could possibly be a carry. Um, Runons. Okay, then we go to Kale. And I mean, you can count Katarina too. Um, so we have Kale, Katarina. Okay, so they have Gunblade, RFC. So right now, there have not been two repeating items so far. Um, of course, I'm arbitrarily counting uh, carries. And I'm, I'm sort of cherry picking here. But these are the champions that I'm playing because they're currently the stronger ones. Um, Kindred, this is actually really interesting because this shows that Kindred carry isn't being super popularized. Um, when a primary carry has these, with the exception of Morgana, which I'll get to, um, as their, you know, first three, there's not really a lot, uh, to look for there. Um, again, you know, stuff like this, but we, we are at Morgana. So Morello for Morgana is a very sp special case for a carry, um, because the talent, like the enlightened talent comp doesn't use these two components, right? So when they get used, they're pretty okay on Morgana. Um, so, but Morello, I mean, Morello Morgana is really, really, really good. Um, so we can kind of count that as an exception, but I don't, I don't want to count it completely. I'll, I'll instead mark this as the Morello carry. Okay. So we'll keep scrolling. I don't want to count Nasus. I don't, I'm not personally counting one cost rerolls. Um, and that, that might be different for you. So if you are seeing these and seeing me pass them, by all means go for them. I personally don't play reroll and I personally am not a fan of like Nasus carry at the moment, but my opinions on this could change and this will not be the first video I make on topics such as this. So all right, so we can go for Nico, and Nico's again a really iffy one, but she does have some success. But jeweled gauntlet, so we've now seen two jeweled gauntlets. Okay, so we'll keep going. Olaf, and now we have two Runons. Okay, now we'll keep going. Samira, Hand of Justice. I'm not sure if we've seen Hand of Justice yet. We have not. Okay, so Hand of Justice is now something to consider. Okay, Set. Uh, I don't really want to consider this one, but I will because you know the five class carries are a little bit hard to rely on, but. I'm willing to at least humor the possibility um, that Jeweled Gauntlet could be something that would be uh, useful for it. Um, Shavana, I don't really want to consider her either, but we'll say Runons. Um, Swain, not even touching that. Talon, Infinity Edge, I guess. Um, I mean, Talon's another you know specific case like Morgana in the event that you know she he he's just using very specific items. Okay. Um, guess we could count Tristana, but Trinomir, Hand of Justice. Um, we're gonna just keep scrolling. Like, looking for our carries. Okay, Hand of Justice on Zaya. Okay, Yasuo, you could count Quicksilver, but eh. Um, okay, so Zed Rapid Fire Cannon. So, in general, that's what you're looking for. And so, the things that you can see here is that bows are super important for carries in a lot of cases. And so, we'll go to any champion that on this list that we kind of just passed over that didn't use bows as their primary thing. We'll see if they use them in their second or tertiary thing. So, you know, for Zaya... She only uses one bow in her three. Okay, so we'll go to Trinomir. He uses zero bows in his three. Um, I mean, he does use it in his four, but that's not what we're going to be trying to look at. You can consider this. You can consider Runons here. Um, Tristana, I'm not going to count. Um, Talon, uh, again, just the one bow. And then Shivana has Rage Blade, Set, None. Uh, Samira, she has a Last Whisper, and she does have Giant Slayer at the end. Um, so Olaf has RFC as his second. Okay, cool. Uh, Nico doesn't, but she's an AP carry. So now we can make the distinction between AP carries and AD carries. So we'll do that. Um, we'll go up to Kale. Kale has a Rage Blade, Callista, Rage Blade, and RFC. And that might be it. It's looking like it. Yeah, that look. I mean, Nikali has that. Okay, so now. What, what, what you can notice while analyzing data like that 
because you're always going to try and use items to slam on your primary carries and then everything else is going to be put to everyone else so as you can see bows are pretty important in a lot of carry comps however not in all of them but what we can extrapolate i guess from this data um is not only you know the items that a lot of people are running but also uh you know items you know combinations i guess so basically one thing that you might have noticed is that giant slayer is used on a couple popular carries right now so for instance talon uses giant slayer um zaya definitely uses giant slayer giant slayer yep and then you know so that's possible so it's possible that in carries you might use those giant slayers or alternatively um you know guardian angel guardian angel is used in a lot of carries as well so this is what we can think of right and uh here's here's the easier way to do it if you are specifically curious about an item in whatever browser you're using i'm pretty sure it's for most of them you can press Control f and it'll bring up a search box i hope you guys can see this on my screen um but it'll bring up a search box and Okay, cool, you can. So basically, you just type in whatever you want to see. Um, and this is a really bad way of cherry picking data, but for instance, we'll do this, right? So we can type sun, fire, space, cave, right? So we have 25 results right now. And of those, we can usually, you know, click through and see where most of them are. There's a couple here. And then, I mean, we can consider which ones of these are in the third or fourth slot. So Lee Sin, okay, whatever. He doesn't actually need that. Nasus, okay, whatever, right? Um, but look, like that's where most of the Sunfire Capes are. And Yone, you know, go for it. Now, let's go for, let's say, Jeweled Gauntlet. Jeweled Gauntlet. And I try to type everything else out. You probably can stop after, you know, a couple because there's not a lot of super uh, specific item names. 12. 12 results, right? So, you know, that. Um, giant Slayer. Oh, God, I can't type. Okay, there's only three. There's only three. There are only three results. So, Giant Slayer might not be something you want to slam that all that often. You can go for... Actually, here's a good one. Hextech Gunblade versus Infinity Infinity Edge. Hextech Gunblade. Nine results. Okay, and of these nine results, you have Aurelian Soul, who's a good carry. Darius and Diana, which are both, like, I would say, okay. Katarina, which is a good carry. Nunu, which is an okay carry. Set, which is a good carry. Swain, which is an okay carry. Vigar, which is a good carry. And Yone, which is a good carry. He's a good carry now, he got buffed. And now let's do Infinity Edge. Infinity Edge. Edge. Okay, so there's eight results. So it might even be more beneficial that in the event that you have a sword to slam for Gunblade instead, unless you can go for the Infinity Edge to go on the combo. But that's also another thing that we need to kind of, I guess, uh, look at a little bit more. And then, you know, of those, there's a couple that are a little bit better. Um, but, you know, it'll be the same way to dissect that data, right? And Infinity Edge definitely looks like a lower uh, list. Um, like, it has more things on the lower edge than Gunblade. Like, I don't think anyone had uh, Infinity Edge at top except for Talon. So, yeah. So, that's what we can look at there. Um, we can go one more, right? Rapid Fire Cannon. Okay. Eight. And actually, real quick, we'll just do Hurricane. Eight. Okay. So, of those, what we're seeing is that there's a pretty similar number between them. Um, and of course you can go for any item here and, and really dissect it. The big thing here is the components that are made of it. So for instance, if you're going for jewel gauntlet, you know, if you go for jewel gauntlet, it'll use one of the, these two components. And then if you go for jewel gauntlet plus affinity edge, if you already have started with a crit glove, it's better to do that. You can go jewel gauntlet gunblade, however, for whatever you're building, if you have a rod start, because you've already gotten one of those. Basically, whenever you have an item that you've started with, you want to be able to move it into a bunch of other things. One more I'll actually do here is Hand of Justice, because I see it a lot on these bottom ends, but I've noticed it a whole lot more everywhere. So personally, for me, I slam Hand of Justice every game. Um, and that's because right now, I don't feel like there's a lot of people who use blue buff better. Um, and, you know, crit gloves can be used for a bunch of things. So Hand of Justice could be really good in a lot of cases. So... 
you can always see what is like the most things being made every single game and then use that to sort of make the most out of your items because realistically you're not going to be getting these three items on a soul every game so sometimes you might have to go these two and then maybe hand of justice but if you can do that you still have within their top five of items um with you know relatively spread out components and of course as jeweled gauntlet gunblade and hand of justice are in terms of components none of them make components for sunfire cape so now if that is your route that you want to go you can start with one of the items for jeweled gauntlet gunblade or hand of justice and then you can try to hit those for your rallying soul and then if you hit the items for sunfire cape you know to make them immediately um whenever you're trying to follow builds you always want to look at stuff like that in, the, in that same vein, something like Titan's Resolve might be something good. I personally enjoy Titan's Resolve as well. Um, you know, again, with these items that you're trying to get, you know, you, you can only really assure three items every game. And even then, it's kind of iffy. So you want to have backup items that might work just as well. Um, anyway, I think that's all I can talk about with items. This is just one resource that you can use for it. There's plenty of others. And this is also not a sponsorship or anything, by the way. But this is specifically what I've used to... Uh, be able to try and understand those so on the website of uh, lawchess.gg you can obviously follow these uh, headers and everything you can look up your own summoner name and all that um, but let's click on meta trends right and again I'll have these specific links in the description anyway you don't have to actually look at what we're doing here so we can look at the meta trends um, so eight brawlers are seemingly doing pretty decent you can see the items that they use and it'll tell you you know the item priorities and it might even have some information um, you know, here, you know, the recent winners and all that. You can see that playing this without brawlers is pretty much impossible. So brawler chosen. Um, but yeah. So anyway, moving on, nine Elderwood, nine Warlord. And this will change all the time. These are only specific to what is meta uh right now. So yeah. And with this, you can also see on, on, on the right side here, the the top four percentage and the win rate. And then the uh placement distribution. So for some of these builds, you know, nine warlord you get it you get it nine elderwood you know duelist duelist might you know have stuff like that i want to actually see if they have the diana build um because i don't know if the diana okay so the diana is here this is the same as it was in the last set right diana reroll was like really easy to top two but by the time you knocked everyone else out of the game it was really really hard to secure that top one spot because diana as a carry just can't compete with something like Lisa at the end of the game but yeah you can look and you can see where where you're exactly trying to end up at and what your goals are and really what you're able to do um and then that can be something that you pursue and these might be builds that you really enjoy uh and especially trying to learn more about um I mean like this like for like enlightened sifo you have possibility for first but you also have a really high possibility for sixth and then top four somewhere in the middle so that's something to keep in mind here, and these are always just guidelines. This is something that I would look at the least of all of these examples. Um, these are just something that you're looking at, and then you're like, okay. But what I would look at instead way more is this right here, which is the recent winner decks. So I haven't looked at any of this stuff, by the way. Um, I have not played on the new patch, and I did not stream uh, today when the new patch went live. So this is all new information for me right now. And I'm going to be trying to dissect this as best as I can with you guys right here. So you can see a little bit about how my mind works with this. So when you look at these, first off, we're going to do the same thing that we did with the items, right? We're going to just really quickly, like, try and look through. And we're going to focus on this area of the screen and see what's winning. So Divine, Warlord, Slayer, Dragon, Elder. Okay. So we're seeing a lot of uh, Dragon and brawler and elder and a couple divines okay so it looks pretty decently spread out um so we'll just scroll back through and again i can't really see a lot of stuff but i do see a couple uh, more duelists than i was expecting anyway so first off you'll look at what won the game so this looks like i mean this looks like kale plus friends right because this isn't this doesn't look like anything uh special it just looks like a guy playing kale and then like a bunch of legendaries um so we can see that Kale was able to probably carry this game with and with four chosen, uh, four four divine. Um, it actually doesn't show me his level that he ended the game at. 
All right, he was level eight, which means he did not have a Divine Leeson, and of course he has a level one. So this guy looks like he had built a bunch of items, and then eventually he had a Chosen Kale, and then he switched into it. Um, by seeing, you know, a Kindred one, a Leeson one, and a Azir one, all I'm seeing here is a guy who rolled down all of his gold and then was able to hit these things. And it looks like this might have been able to just completely win the game. You can see what he played against. He literally won against the level three Nasus. Um, so, you know, that's what, what that's what we can look at. Um, and of course, it's a Chosen. It'll tell you what Chosens are winning. Um, nine Warlords, you can see that. You can see that this guy went the reroll Nidalee variant. Um, you know, this guy went uh, six layer. So you can see this. Um, he looks like he farmed a bunch of Orin items. So you just try to determine what their win condition was that game and if it's possible for you to achieve it. In addition to that, I do need to make note of this first guy and also the second guy by comparison. These are from the Korean region. These may not work in NA or wherever you are currently from uh, zone as well. Um, and what I mean by that is by regions play differently based on different re uh, means. I'm not from Korea. I don't know specifically how Korea functions as a region in the competitive tft scene i do know that culturally a lot of them are playing in like internet cafes and things like that where you have to pay money to play the game a lot of them are really just trying to overbear all of their opponents and then go to the next game so that they can play more games in less time so maybe the ways that you play are not uh the best for the current region that you are in um and you may need to just learn and adjust like that i guess the easiest way i can say it is if you play in lower elos like bronze and silver um, they play extremely aggressively because they don't have proper knowledge on economy or late game. So if you play them and you are a master player, you'll probably take like 50 health before you start winning. But once you start winning, you're not going to stop. Um, it was a trend I noticed in, uh, many times playing unranked to diamond accounts. So there's another thing to know. And then you can tell, I mean, in Korea, there's a lot more like reroll builds. I mean, you can see the top guy is he played against a bunch of people with level threes. So you can just see what, uh, you know, could possibly be uh, done with that. You can look at EU West, Latin America North. I'm actually not seeing that many NA. Okay, so NA, you know, you have Warlord uh, reroll. And then, I mean, oh, you can always compare the items and all that too. So, as we're looking at this, you know, it's a lot of Warlords. This is actually Sharpshooter, which surprises me. But I'm pretty sure it's just a Samira chosen. Um, I could be wrong. Could actually be Nidalee. Um, and maybe... Maybe we can even go to this guy's uh, profile real quick and see if, uh, you know, he uh, he actually won with those things. Or if he's continuing to win or if that was just a lucky game. Um, I don't think it actually shows the Chosen anymore, does it? All right, so it doesn't, unfortunate. Um, but yeah, that's just another way we can, you know, dissect this. But this is more important than the last screen we went through because this is currently what's winning um, with an unbiased version of telling the information so basically um i think that someone probably puts together uh someone probably puts together these like i'm i'm willing to humor the possibility that someone basically puts these together as like a guide um because of what is winning based off of these statistics um that's what i'm willing to look at in terms of like what what this information means but this is literally just what is immediately being reported right so again and, and you can refresh this every few minutes um this updates very very quickly and i believe it's like the last 20 or something so i mean we just refresh this this is a fabled uh nico game and you can see that to win this in korea this guy had three uh three stars so you know more stuff to uh look into um so currently this is just what is um like what i can offer you outside of like my content right um this website is pretty decent for it um i unfortunately had to remove a different website from the original cut of the video um because their information was just not correct and i wasn't going to show you guys that video so i decided to re-record the whole thing so hopefully you guys enjoy this um if you guys have any questions by any all means, you can drop them in the comments, or you can catch me live streaming on YouTube every day, except for, you know, today. Like, six days a week, usually. Sometimes I have to give myself a break. You can come in and ask me questions. We have a loyalty point system and everything there, whatever, whatever. You know, but hopefully this can help you guys dissect information a little bit on your own without having to go and watch people and 
um, you know, go on a Twitch and ask them a million questions just for them to maybe not be able to respond to you as quickly as you might need. Um, I always do still recommend that you go and watch people because I think it's fun to go and uh, watch people and I think it's a good experience to be able to possibly learn the game. But with all that said, I'd like to thank you guys for watching and hopefully this helps you guys out a lot. Um, but with all that out of the way, I hope you guys enjoy your day. Hope you guys have some good games and uh, peace, peace. Thank you.